G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Continuing and uh, nearly at the end of this series where I'm going through each AFL team in the league uh, from reverse alphabetical order and I'm trying to do a little bit of a profile on how I assess, you know, I guess first of all how 23 went, how their best 22 is shaping up for 2024, their overall list changes, a couple of comments on, you know, depth, etc. before finally giving a bit of a forecast of what I might expect from each team going into 2024. And today we are doing the Carlton Football Club. One of the more interesting stories of 2023, particularly, you know, the way that the season started so poorly, or actually, you know, it started right, then there was a mid-patch there, which was horrendous, and they ended the season as one of the form sides of the competition, and they're an interesting team to forecast what might go ahead. So, like I said, I'm going to profile their best 22 and uh, give a little bit of an analysis there. If you want to see other clubs' analysis, as I've said in previous videos, there is a playlist on this channel called Team Based Videos for 2024, where you can go find um, the 15 other clubs that I've done so far. So yesterday would have been Collingwood, uh, today is Carlton, and then of course I've got the Brisbane Lions and Adelaide Crows to finish off the series. Uh, as an aside, I'm thinking of doing another series, maybe looking at each team's young 22, if that makes sense, or their, their young core. Um, something to get us through, maybe one a day throughout the off season, why not? Uh, but let me know if you have any ideas in the comment section below. And as always, uh, I invite you to consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, as I said, I'm gonna intend to make both footy and cricket content this summer uh, before finally launching back into football stuff at the start of the 2024 season. Also, as another aside before I start, uh, if there's any Carlton fans out there that don't spend a whole lot of time on YouTube, I thoroughly recommend checking out the channels Blue Abroad and Pommy and Oz. Uh, they do amazing work based on um, Carlton specific content. It's a huge platform now. Uh, they're great guys as well. So while this is a video from an Eagles fan trying to profile Carlton, uh, if you're not aware, Blue Abroad and Pommy and Oz, both of them do Carlton specific content, although I will acknowledge Pommy and Oz also does great general AFL content. So I wanted to give those guys a shout out before cracking into my own attempt at analysis. But we'll start off with uh, profiling how 2023 went. Uh, overall, obviously a massive success, you have to say, for Carlton. The season started okay. I think they, they had a good win over Richmond and then a draw in round two against the Cats. They started the season just being good enough to win some early games before a mid-season lull really saw uh, them sort of almost fade into bottom four calculations at one point. I think I did a, a video around about this midpoint of the season last year where I didn't have Carlton in my finals race. It was called uh, the finals race for 2023. And Carlton had sunk so far throughout that middle period of the season. In fact, specifically, there was a six-game losing streak between rounds eight and 13 where they slumped to 15th on the ladder, they did not look like finals contenders in the slightest. Not only did they become finals contenders, but they became outside premiership chances uh, towards the back end of this season. There was obviously a nine game winning streak to close out the 2023 home and away season, and then two really good uh, finals wins where they were both kind of Challenge, definitely, you'd have to say. So they beat Sydney in the first week in a close game, and then they went and beat the Ds for the second time in a row, if I'm not mistaken, in a tight tussle at the MCG. And, and I think that was an interesting development as well because this Carlton side, a lot of those players, including Patrick Cripps, I'm pretty sure had never played a final in that uh, before that final series. To go out and win two heart-stopping finals uh, was a sensational effort. So in terms of you know individual things that went right, um, Patrick Cripps, while he wasn't a Brownlow medalist this season, uh, still had a really good year uh, through the guts there with 6.75 clearances a game. And we saw Sam Walsh also, when reintroduced this side, uh, really hit top form. And I think he was the player of the final series. He was very dominant. In general, the midfield dominance was a feature. Adam Chera also had uh, his career best season, has to be said. But I think if you're highlighting individuals, Wiedering's another one down back who had a great season, but I don't think anyone goes past Charlie Curnow, who was one of the most dominant players in the competition this year, winning his second column in a row. And uh, it's interesting, before I even get into the 22, the players I've listed there all sort of exist in their spine. Well, there's Wiedering down back, Kerno up forward, and then you know an elite midfield, which is um, certainly a hallmark of this team. And something that I did forecast at the start of 23, where I thought we might see an explosion from Carlton. It didn't happen in the way I expected, but I saw the ingredients there. 
So overall, they made it all the way to a prelim and then lost honorably to the Brisbane Lions at the Gabba. Brisbane are a fantastic team. So I think Carlton overall can only be pretty stoked with the way that season transpired. And uh, I'd have to say that this is the best Carlton side I've seen in uh, my 21 years of watching football. So let's cover their off season uh, in terms of list changes. So the list cuts that they had, they had Zach Fisher uh, get traded to North Melbourne. Paddy Dow went to St Kilda. Ed Kerno retired, as did Lockie Plowman, and then they delisted Lockie O'Brien, Josh Honey, and Sam Philp. In terms of additions, uh, somewhat quiet. Uh, they, they recruited Elijah Hollands, brother of uh, Ollie, who's obviously on the, on the list already, from the Gold Coast Suns. Then they went to the draft and took Ashton Moore and Billy Wilson. Then they rookie listed Matt Carroll, a, uh, another running defender there. And then uh, through the train on process, I think they signed through a delisted free agency, Orazio Fantasia as well, who was cut by Port Adelaide. So. A mix there. Elijah Hollands is kind of like a forward midfielder. Ashton Moyer, a medium forward type. A couple of medium-sized defenders and then a genuine small forward. So let's crack into their best 22. And this is relatively settled. But again, like pretty much all of the 22s I've had to do so far, uh, there is some some spots and positional areas where there is genuine competition between uh, depth players. So first of all, I'll plot that 22. The players in yellow, of which there is one, Orazio Fantasia, are the players new to the list. So generally, it's a pretty steady lineup, um, considering not too much coming in or out. So uh, first of all, the, f- the thing that sticks out to me is that spine that I mentioned before. Uh, with the exception of McGovern, who's a decent player, I mean, some of those players are absolutely top notch. You've got a Brownlow medalist, you've got a, a three common medals in there, and you've got Weedering as well, who I can't actually remember off the top of my head if he's won an All-Australian, but he's gotten very close. Forgive me, I've been doing so much football analysis this off-season that uh, things like that, facts are just slipping out of my mind as fast as they're coming in. But let's start with the defense in general. I think it's fairly settled. So I've picked McGovern, Kemp, and Wietering as the sort of uh, tall defenders there. Wietering, the true key position. McGovern, a little bit more of a shorter interceptor, but still has played pretty well in that role. Brody Kemp probably competing with Caleb Marchbank, and this is for the first one where I was a little bit stuck. It seems like a pretty 50-50 call. I just went for the younger option there, but Marchbank seems like a bit more true key positional size, so that could depend on opponent, uh, but I decided to go for Brody Kemp there, who I think has shown pretty good promise. Saad and Newman are obviously um, absolute mainstays there, and Zach Williams returns from that ACL, so adds a little bit of run and drives, which pushes up Doherty onto the wing again. Patrick Cripps in the middle and Akers, who was a good recruit for Carlton, on the other wing. So a pretty settled uh, center line there with Chera and Walsh obviously going to be picked as the midfielders there. So that midfield in particular is pretty top end with Cripps, Walsh and Chera are probably as the best three, but the support there from Doherty and Akers. Um, and then I've picked Matt Kennedy and George Hewitt on the bench. Uh, Yeah, I I really do like that mix, and I think that's good enough to compete with any midfield in the game. And then you go to the forward line, and you've got two common medals. Now, obviously, Harry Mackay hasn't quite recaptured that previous form, but, uh, you know, he starts, obviously, round one. Um, But I think structurally as well, 200 centimeter forward contrasts nicely with Kerno, who's just going to do his thing. Uh, Picking the rest of the forward line was a bit more interesting. And, you know, uh, there's actually a lot of small forwards on Carlton's list, and uh, that was one observation I had. I've gone with Silvani for a start as the third toll. Now, I did debate this because I've also picked Pitney and Tom DeConing in the ruck. So, Jack Silvani can be a second ruck and medium forward, and perhaps, perhaps you drop Pitney there um, to, to fit in another runner, but at the same time, I didn't want to drop Pitney because he's such a regular player for them. So, I think DeConing and Pitney is the best ruck combo, and Silvani could, in theory, be that second or third ruck. Um, but equally, I think Silvani has the third tall in that forward line, adds some nice structure to that team. So it's kind of the mix I went with, but I'm not 100% like cool with the balance of it. But anyway, Jesse Motlop is one of the better young small forward uh, players, uh, prospects rather, of the competition, 33 games now. I think he's immensely talented and, and no questions asked. He's getting picked. Jack Martin is going to be picked as well. Um, the other spot is Orazio Fantasia. Now, this might have been a little bit ambitious because I don't actually know how uh, realistic this is. I, I actually had Matt always in the team uh, until I swapped him out for Orazio, but there's a, there's a fair amount of competition there. If I just scroll down on my notes here, uh, there's always there's uh, Matt Cottrell, uh, Fogarty's in there, Corey Durden as well. So there's actually a selection there of forwards who are, from the outside looking in, are a little bit evenly ranked. And I will say that always actually did kick 27 goals last year, which is more than Jesse Motlop. So um, yeah, it was hard to leave him out. I just wonder if Orazio, with his 
proven ability at AFL level in the past, they might just favour him early. But who knows? I'm open to suggestion on that one. Jordan Boyd, uh, I didn't mention there, he's the, uh, definitely gonna pick, get, should get picked, in my opinion, as the seventh defender in this team. Um, but overall, like it's a really good balanced team. There's midfield depth. It's not only strong at the top end, it bats deep. And structurally, they're really sound um, with uh, the, the tools that they have and the runners. And the other thing that I notice about this team is that it's mature. There's not too many, there's no teenagers really other than uh, Ollie Hollands who I've picked as a sub. Um, but f- further to that, there's not a lot of veterans either. You know, Sam Doherty's 30. Um, who else have we got there? Zach Williams, probably a little bit younger or around the same age. Adam Sard's, I think, 30. Mitch McGovern's a year younger than that. So are they veterans? I kind of think in my head of over 30 as veteran. My point being there that they're not vulnerable of, of you know transitioning out some stars in the next few years. I think that the profile, the age profile and the skill profile and the structure of this team is really sound. And I actually think that shapes up as one of the most formidable best 22s in the competition right now. And I, uh, I will say, again, I'll point out that one of the few good calls that I make in the preseason was this year where I, I actually looked at Carlton and I thought, the recipe and the ingredients are there for an absolute gun premiership team in the same way that I felt like that was the case for the Ds before that happened. I'm not saying that I called it in 2021, but I think the, the ingredients were obvious from the outside looking in. And I made that observation with Carlton. Then throughout the middle of the year this year, they let me down. Then I didn't think they'd make the finals. And then they exploded in a way that I had originally forecasted. So yeah, interesting year. Um, some other observations about this team. Um, so the depth options in, in March Bank and Young are probably there for the key backs. So that's pretty solid. There's a few other you know medium defensive types like Lockie Cowan. I had just missing out uh, Chincotta. I hope I'm saying that right. Again, one of those things that I've just like forgotten. Uh, there's too much going in my head. Um, and then two more recruits in Billy Wilson and Matt Carroll may or may not find themselves around this team. I, I kind of think that if they're playing this year, it means that Carlton's injuries are terrible or they've had an amazing season. So we'll see. Uh, another observation is um, probably just an actual lack of midfielders on this list. And I'm not talking about... I'm not saying that the depth isn't there or that the quality of depth isn't there, but it's just like not that many on the list in general. I mean, Elijah Hollands, now I think about it, actually probably was a pretty necessary recruit if they forecast him as a midfielder. But the next couple that I could think of were like David Cunningham, kind of a midfielder forward anyway, Jackson Binns. Um, But in terms of pure midfielders, there's not that many on the list, which is interesting. Uh, But generally speaking, other than that, the depth and the quality is there and, um, you know, Hollands obviously was a high draft pick there and I picked him outside this 23. So, oh, sorry, this 22. He's the 23rd man. So overall, the strength of that 22, like I said, is arguably one of the strongest on paper. I'd be careful of saying that. Um, you know, is it as strong as Collingwood's? Well, I think if you you look at pure talent and the fact that the uh, distribution of that talent between talls and smalls is probably a little bit better than Collingwood's. Like, I think this team could win the Premiership. Uh, that might flame any Collingwood fan that's watching this. A lot more goes into winning a Premiership than simply having the most talent. So I will say that, and I'm not necessarily saying Carlton will be better than Collingwood in 2024. But from a talent point of view and a positional depth point of view, um, I think that there's no reason this side couldn't win a Premiership as early as next year. Um, like I said, so much more goes into winning a Premiership than simply... Uh, talent, but then you know, I also think it was quite compelling uh, Carlton's performances in finals. So, you know, that was the first final series for most of that playing list. It wouldn't have been all. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, no, nah, surely not. Uh, but I, I think either way, their ability to stand up in those finals shows that there's a mentality there that is quite compelling, like I said. So overall, trying to forecast 2024, uh, I think not only are they set up really well in the short term to compete for flags, I think there's also a chance that their, their window is quite long. You know, forecasting premiership windows is, is quite tricky as well because there's so many other mitigating factors and you know injuries, careers being cut short, trades requested and stuff like that. But I just think the, the profile that Carlton has right now is almost ideal. Not, no side is perfect, but it's, um, it's pretty well-rounded and very strong. You know, some of the oldest players, like I said, Doherty, Saad, uh, McGovern. I feel like Williams is younger than that. I feel like he might be 28. He's either 28 or 30. Uh, and Cripps is only 28. So uh, and he in particular could probably play deep into his 30s. Probably. I don't know. Maybe that's a big call. But anyway, that's my take on Carlton. I think they look incredibly strong uh, in terms of ongoing needs or anything like that. 
Um, sure, they'd like to have a clear winner out of this small forward battle that they've got because they've got like Durden, who's got a bit of talent. Always has been productive last year. Ashton Moore, I think, uh, obviously high in potential if you've followed my draft content. Um, and Jesse Motlop's a star or a star in waiting, I think. So there's that. Probably answering the question around like, you know, the, the exact tall back structure that they go with around Wietering. There's that. Um, but other than that, you know, if we get a healthy Carlton this year, look out, look out. Because I think this, like I said, is definitely the best Carlton I've ever seen from a talent point of view. But also, you know, from a performance point of view, because I don't know if I've ever seen them get to a prelim anyway. So anyway, Carlton fans deserve some some success. So uh, I've said that in a lot of videos lately, but I, I think it's true. Carlton fans have gone through a lot as well. Um, it'll be, it's a great time for them. The excitement going into this year must be pretty immense. So there you go, Carlton. I've just blown smoke up your asses <laughs> for 15 minutes. And I hope some of this, these points have resonated with you. So uh, let me know in the comments what you agree with or disagree with. Um, am I overrating Carlton? Um, I don't know, obviously. <laughs> but anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you being subscribed to the channel. Like I said, you can find plenty of more content uh, on this channel, uh, both covering the Big Bash League at the moment, but uh, in this particular profile of video, uh, I've done 16 so far with two left to go. So thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.